switching power supplies versus analog supplies. All right, this is an interesting, so I guess we're getting kind of technical these days. It's from Anshum in Bangalore, India. Anshum writes, hey Paul, I came across your videos recently and I've been going through every one of them. Oh, God help you, Anshum. <laughs> but thank you. It's great to have somebody explain the intricacies of audio design so effortlessly. Well, why not? Um, my question was around what makes a good power supply for a hi-fi amplifier. I see that most high-end ones use toroidal transformers, and slowly but surely, many have started using switching power supplies. Could you share your thoughts on this? Yeah. It's, it's, a, uh, it's a subject near and dear to my heart because we've been and do use both switching power supply and old-fashioned analog supplies in our power amplifiers. So in our Stellar series, which is our more affordable series, the, the uh, S300 and M700s, they use switch mode power supplies and that allows them to be in a fairly compact chassis, produce a lot of power with very little weight, and I mean, it, they're pretty slick. As opposed to, say, our BHK amplifiers, of which, you know, I mean, they're, well, they're about that tall. You know, they're about this, this tall. They're, they're, what, are they, seven inches or so. They're fairly big, and they've got these big moose <coughs> transformers in it. Oh, my God. This thing is heavy. It's got to be 25 pounds. <laughs> um, and it's just solid copper and iron. This is a toroidal transformer. And, ah, uh, geez louise. I wonder if we could make them any bigger. And we do. And we can. And thank God I don't have to lift them. So, an analog power supply is pretty simple. It's a transformer, whether EI, which uh, is, is kind of the square transformers that you've seen, and they, they have these interleaved um, pieces of steel, and then they, they, they wrap wire around those, and it winds up being kind of a square sort of thing, or they have an outer bobbin that goes around. But anyway, those are sort of the square ones, and then these round ones are called toroids. And they convert the AC into the appropriate level, because you've got 120 or 200, oh, where you live, you have 240 volts coming in, and maybe the power supply wants 60 volts. So you're going to take your 240 and the transformer is going to narrow it down to 60 volts that we want, right? And if you're going to draw a lot of power, then you need a big transformer. And the more power you want to draw from that voltage division, the bigger the transformer has to be. I mean, that's just because if otherwise it just run out of gas, right? So that goes into a diode bridge, which is just four diodes, and then some capacitors, and voila, we have the appropriate AC to DC conversion at the appropriate voltage. A switch mode power supply is very different in some respects. There's still a transformer, but the transformer is quite a bit smaller, and yet there can be quite a bit more power. So how do they do that? Well, they do that because of a switching device in front. So, so let me explain a little something to you that a, a lot of people aren't really familiar with. The lower the frequency coming out of the wall, so in your country you have 50 cycles, and over here we have 60 cycles. So that frequency of the sine, of, of the, it's going from plus to minus, plus to minus, 60 times a second, or 50 times a second. That's fairly slow in, in terms of power supplies. So at those low frequencies, we need big iron. That's what this thing is for, because I can't control the frequency of your power coming in from your power generation station. But here's what I can do. If I could take that incoming power and chop it up into a lot higher frequency. So I take a little bit and I 
deliver it, I go off and I deliver it, and I chop it. I put what we call a chopper on the front. So it goes bop, 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 and it's drawing current fast, fast, fast. Maybe 100,000 times a second it's drawing current because I've got a capacitor to kind of smooth out the AC, and I have this, this switching thing that, that grabs hold of this power in little bits and pumps it through. Now, instead of trying to put this low frequency 60 hertz through this big ass transformer, now I've got a little transformer because remember, the lower the frequency, the bigger the transformer. Well, the converse is true. The higher the frequency, the smaller the transformer. So now I can have a little tiny small transformer. It then goes into a standard diode bridge and, and regulators and all this other crap. Here's, and, and so that's why switch mode power supplies can be so small and had to deliver so much current because of these high frequencies. But there is a downside, and we like to say in engineering, there ain't no free lunch. And when you chop that incoming wave into those little bits, something else happens than just the chopping of it, radio frequencies. Because you're all of a sudden slamming high energy very quickly, you're turning that thing into a radio transmitter. That's, I mean, a radio transmitter is basically just a big power amplifier running at a very high frequency. And the higher the frequency it runs at, the, 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 uh, uh, the, the, the shorter the wavelength, the more it'll shoot out and become and broadcast. So we don't want to make a radio broadcaster because if, if you know, untended to, that sucker is going to spew radio waves throughout your house. It's going to interfere with your radio, with your cell phone. I mean, everything is going to go kablooey and haywire. You don't want that. So we have to figure out ways to contain that radiation. And that's where all the science of switch mode power supplies comes into. Anyway, that, that's, those are the big issues and that's the problem. Everything's got baggage. I foresee the day when we will be able to build power supplies that are switch mode for our, our, our more, our higher end amplifiers like BHKs and all that to where we can get rid of these guys. We haven't figured it out yet, a way to do it that sounds quite as good. And that's why we still sell these because so far they still sound better. But the technology is there. I would love to do that. And someday, I hope we can do that. Okay, hope that helped. Talk to you tomorrow. Bye.